In this video, we're going to work on part five of task one, making GDP graphs, i.e. making graphs of the distribution we just made in the last video. So we want to be able to make a frequency histogram, a relative frequency histogram, a frequency polygon, and a relative frequency polygon. Boy, that's a mouthful. All right, so again, I'm not going to use your data set, but the same idea that I'm using here applies for your problems. So I want to start by making a frequency histogram. So I'm going to click on my frequencies right here, and I'm going to go up here to insert. I'm going to insert a column chart right here, like that, and there it is, <laughs> hypothetically speaking. However, it's a bit of a mess, so we're going to have to work on this a little bit. Now notice I can kind of drag this around. You kind of click and move it wherever you so desire. I'm going to click on the series one and get rid of that. We don't need that. And then I'm going to click here, right click on the X axis, and it's going to allow you, allow you to select data. See that right there? You can actually do it up here as well in this ribbon menu, in the design menu, where it says select data. And what I want to do is I want to select my horizontal columns. So let me go back. Horizontal axis labels, sometimes it might say category axis labels, or depending on your version of Excel. I'm going to click edit. And we have a couple options here. Oops, you know what? I gotta move this out of my way. Hold on, cancel. We have a couple options for this. Um, we could use the midpoints technically, or we could use the um, classes that we put in ourselves. It's kind of up to you. Neither one of them is perfect. I mean, technically, a uh, histogram is supposed to have each of those tick marks at the bottom um, selected with the lower class limits. However, that's kind of tricky to manage in Excel. So it's up to you. You can either use these values right here. Let's just throw those in for fun. Um, but if you liked, you could also use the midpoints either way. Um, I'm going to throw use the classes. I think that's probably a better way to do this. So you can see when I click edit, I kind of highlighted these classes right here. And I lift up on my mouse and you can see them starting right there, 30 to 39 and so on. And I say, okay, and it puts them right there and you can see it. 30 to 39 is your first class, 40 to 49 is your second class, and so on. And then the, don't worry about them being so mashed up. That won't actually stay that way because you're going to drag it open and move it around a bit. I was just making it small so I could actually see where the graph or where that bit of the table was. Since I couldn't see it, I kind of made it smaller so I could. Next, I don't really like these colors, so I'm going to play around with them a bit. So if you click on the design tools, you have a whole bunch of options here. You can make them whatever you like. Um, these are kind of preset options up here. There's so many of them. And if you don't like those, you can right click. Um, let me remember what it is. Format data series. There it is. And you can see you can play around with the fills. Right now it's automatic, but you can fiddle with the solids. You can fiddle with this. You can make it so they have patterns. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. I want to make them have bubbles, you know, things like that. I'm going to go back to automatic because I'm boring like that. But the one thing you absolutely have to do is on series options up at the top, you need to fiddle around with your gap width. A histogram has no gaps. That's kind of the point of a histogram. Bar charts are the ones that have gaps. Now, if you don't remember the difference, remember <laughs> in Chapter 2, histograms are made with quantitative data on the horizontal axis right here. Right? You're basically making this graph right here right now. Bar charts have qualitative data, so they do have gaps. See the difference? So qualitative data has gaps, quantitative data has no gaps. And the way to make that happen in Excel is to click on, here, I'll click on it again. So you click on it, you want to format your data series, and under series options you want to change your gap to zero gap. Me personally, I don't like the fact that I don't have borders, so I'm actually going to go to border and pick a solid color. I'm going to make it black. And then I'm going to go to border styles and make it kind of thicker because I want to be able to see my borders. I don't like this whole non-border thing. There we go. Looks nice. Now, of course, we also need to have some axes labels here. So I'm going to throw in a horizontal axis. I like it going this way. Oops. Horizontal axis. There we go. Oh. I know, I'm in, I'm in the wrong zone. I want access title, sorry. I was in the wrong spot. Access title, right here. So I want a title below my axis. These were my final exam grades. Of course, they are different things for your data set. You'll have to put in some appropriate word. 
And then over here, I had frequency. So I'm going to go to Axis Title again, click Vertical Axis, and I want, I'm going to rotate the title. I like that one. I'm going to type Frequency. And there you have it. And then I'm going to need a chart title. And that's up here at the top left, chart title. You can also get it by um, right-clicking and naming it that way. But I think it's easier if you just do it up here in the ribbon. So I'm going to center it above the chart. I'm not going to overlay. If you overlay, that writes it over. And I don't really like that version. That's just me. I want to have it above the chart. So I'm going to have these were final exam grade frequency histogram. There we go. Beautiful. All right, now I'm going to kind of move that one down here. You could even label it. Like if this was like part B, I'm going to double click in here and put a little B in front or, or A or whatever it was. Actually, it was number one. I just went and looked. All right, so this was number one, right? Frequency histogram. All right, so now I want to do it all again, but I want to do it for a relative frequency. So I'm going to kind of scroll up. I'm going to highlight the relative frequencies, insert, column, pick a column chart. I'll leave this one blue, that's fine, but I'm going to go to, actually no, I'm going to do purple. I don't know why, I just feel like it. Right click, select data. I want to edit my axis labels, and I'm in trouble again because I can't see, but it would be these column, these cells right here. Well, that's all right. When that happens, just kind of cancel your way out of it. Move the graph over so you can see. Now right click, select data. I'm going to pick those classes again. Oh, no, sorry. Right click. I did it wrong. There we go. Right click, select data. There it is. Edit that, those horizontal axis labels. Highlight these ones. Say OK, and there they are. Beautiful. Say OK. Uh, now I can move this back because I've got everything in and I need. All right, what else do we need? We need to have, so I'm going to click on layout. I need a chart title. So I'm going to put this above the chart. This is number two. This is exam, final exam, grade, um, relative frequency histogram, enter. Then I'm going to cl click off of that title. I'm going to go over here, access title, vertical, I like the rotated one, but you can use one of the other ones if you so desire. This will be relative frequency. And then axis title, horizontal. And these were final exam grades. All right, so there's that. Now I've got to right click, format data series, change that gap to zero. And if you like adding borders like I do, I'm going to click on the border style, make it wider. I'm going to go to a solid line and make it black. And there we have it. And I'm just going to move it around, kind of scrolling around, moving it down. You can move it down and around. You want to make it easy for your instructor to find your picture and know which one it was and have it be lovely labeled and titled. And I think the nice colors are an added touch. All right, now we've got the histograms done. We need to do the polygons. So the thing about a polygon is it's supposed to have a fake first class. So we need to make a fake class here, up here at this stop. So where would the first midpoint be? Well, it would be 25 because that's 10 away from 35, right? And then similarly down here, if I drag this down, it would have been 105 right there, right? It would be the next class. These are all 10 apart, so I'm just kind of adding my width, subtracting my width here and adding my width here. And I'll get a fake class here and a fake class here. You can even label it fake first class, and this is the fake last class. That's just for your own benefit to know, right? They don't actually have anybody in there, so their frequencies are zero. You can leave them blank, you can put zeros in. And their relative frequencies, similarly, are zero because there's nobody there. But you need them in order to make your polygon because your frequency polygon is supposed to start at zero and end at zero. So now that I have my fake classes in there, I'm going to highlight all my fake frequencies right here insert, and I want to pick a line graph this time. And I'm going to pick this one with the dots on it. And it looks basically like that. Now delete the series thing again. We don't need that. All right, and again, I'm going to kind of move this out of the way because I'm going to want to get to those midpoints because I'm going to right click, select data, edit my horizontal axis label just like before, 
and I'm going to highlight all of these values that I just made up. My fake class all the way through the real classes, and then my fake class at the end again. So there they have them. Okay, so there are all my midpoints. And then I'm going to have to start adding in labels. So let's see here. Chart title. This will be number three, final exam frequency polygon. Enter. Access title, vertical is kind of easy. That's always frequency or relative frequency. Relative frequency, you could also say percent if you so desired, if they were percentages. Um, and then horizontal label, these are the final exam. They're grades. You could say grade midpoints if you wanted. Just kind of keep it clear what you were looking at. I don't really like this color, so I'm going to click on this, go to design. I'm going to change it to aqua because I can. Why not? <laughs> all right, and that's all there is for that one. You've got it starting at zero, goes all the way up, and then it ends at zero again. See why we left those empty classes there now, right? I'm going to move this down, kind of scroll down and keep moving it. And there I have it. You can make it bigger or smaller, whatever you like. And then you're just going to do it all again. So this time, highlight the relative frequencies. Insert, line graph, pick a line graph. Pick a color you like. I'm going to go orange this time. Delete the legend. And then remember to, to do the classes. It's easier if you just kind of move this out of the way so you can see where you're going to grab. So you want to right click, select data, edit your horizontal labels, pick all those midpoints, including the fake ones, and say OK. You should see them 25, 35, and so on. Say OK. And then you're going to have to click on layout, access title, relative frequency and then axis title horizontal axis this will be um, final exam scores right you could say midpoints you don't have to I mean it's up to you um, and then let's see here it's kind of known that they're midpoints because it's a polygon it kind of makes sense so and then I put a title above the chart this is a number four relative frequency polygon of, well, I guess I just, that's it. Let me go back here. Final exam grade. There you go. Final exam grade relative frequency, if I can spell, polygon. Enter. I'm going to kind of move it down. So there they are. If you want to kind of, if you ever notice, like here, I forgot to put the word grade in. If you notice that, you can double click. Oops, not not on the title, but kind of click inside. There we go. And if you play it, fiddle around with it enough, it'll let you play with the actual words inside without rewriting the whole thing. And like always, you want to make it so that everything's nice and neat and organized. The table's organized. Each of the graphs is nice and neatly placed. Each of them is labeled appropriately. That way it makes it easy for your instructor to find all the parts that they are looking for. All right, we are all done with part five.